Hello everybody, this is Chris back again with the Ancient Scholars. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, uh, some of these other uh, di uh, basically we'll, we'll stay at diatomic molecules for now and make it perhaps just a little more complicated uh, with the molecular orbital theory but we'll try to keep it intuitive. So let's go ahead and we look at hydrogen and I can just put hydrogen up again so I have hydrogen here hydrogen here we're gonna and and of course uh, this is energy um, here as far as uh, high energy low energy um, hydrogen of course has one electron in a the one s uh, the the one zero zero uh, plus or minus one half um, configuration or wave function and I'm gonna go ahead and bring uh, so I'll just put an arrow here and an arrow here to tell us that we have an, an electron in the the one uh, s orbital in the 1s orbital. We're going to go ahead and bring these um, 1s orbitals together uh, to make molecular orbitals and these orbitals um, actually bond along the z-axis um, so they, 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 they call them uh, sigma orbitals and we know that low energy is favored so this is what we call bonding orbital high energy is not as favored so I'll put a star here, sigma star, to denote that as an anti-bonding orbital. So I have two electrons here, one electron here, one electron here. So I need to have both of those electrons accounted for in the molecule, um, the, hydro the H2 molecule here in the middle. Um, so I can put one electron here in uh, plus one half, one electron here, uh, minus one half, or spin up, spin down. And here I have my um, molecular orbital diagram for diatomic hydrogen. Let's go ahead and look at helium now and we'll, we'll kind of compare and contrast these guys a little bit. Um, again, I have energy here. All right, So helium has uh, two electrons. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll just go to the middle here and we'll make the middle um, our H2 molecule. And we'll see if this is actually predicted by molecular orbital theory. So I'm going to have a helium molecule over here and I'm going to have a helium molecule over here. And the helium molecule has a um, 1s2 electron configuration. Um, 1s2, okay, because there are two electrons in the s orbital. So what I'll do is I'll just draw the s orbital here and I'll draw the s orbital here and we'll go ahead and occupy that s orbital um, with electrons. Spin up, spin down, spin up, spin down. Okay. So when I bring uh, these two molecules together to make a, a diatomic molecule of hydrogen, um, we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to have two different um, orbitals. We're going to have um, an orbital of high energy here, our antibonding orbital, and an orbital of low energy here our bonding orbital and this is going to be sigma I can't really draw my sigma as very well I apologize and that'll be my sigma star my anti-bonding orbital so I've got one two three four electrons that I need to account for um, so I'd better have those four electrons somewhere in here well I can go ahead and I can put two electrons in my bonding orbital spin up spin down and then I have two electrons left. Well, I have no other place but to put them into the antibonding orbital. Okay, spin up and spin down. All right, so now let's go ahead and calculate the bond order um, for helium. I want to take the uh, number of electrons in um, bonding orbitals here. That's going to be two. So I have two electrons in bonding orbital. I'm going to subtract the number of electrons in antibonding orbitals. That just happens to be 2. And then I'm going to divide the whole thing by 2. Well, 2 subtract 2 equals 0, and 0 divided by 2 is, surprise, still 0. So my bonding order is 0. So what that tells me is that molecular orbital theory um, does not predict that a, oops, an HE2, <laughs> helium, uh, dihelium molecule um, can exist uh, because there's simply no bonding. They, they, they won't bond. These, these cancel each other out in essence. And lo and behold, in nature, we don't 
really see hydrogen or helium rather helium bonding. And of course, helium is what's called a noble gas. It's stable. It has um, its its s orbital is full of electrons. Its valence shell is full. It doesn't care to bond. It's not particularly reactive. And really, the only forces of attraction that exist between helium are, are of course, gravity, and that's pretty much um, doesn't even really exist at, at this this level. I mean, it does, but not not at any practical extent. And then just a very 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 slight amount of um, London dispersion forces or London forces, Van der Waals forces. That's it. Um, and from what I understand, there are some very, very special cases where I, I, I think they've seen the helium-2 molecule, but it, it basically was just so unstable, it didn't last long, and it just really doesn't really occur in, um, in the tangible world, at least. We just don't see this, and, and so this is, again, another great prediction uh, by molecular orbital theory. Okay, guys, take care.